Nasir, it's a pleasure to meet you and congratulations on the results of Castle AF. I think it's going to be a real game changer in, in the domain of heart failure and, and electrophysiology. We hope so. Thank yeah. you so much for inviting me here. Yeah. Are you able to tell us a little bit about the study? So, you know, Castle AF uh, was initiated to study the effectiveness of catheter ablation of AFib in patients with heart failure uh, affecting on, on you know, hard primary endpoints, and that's important to emphasize, yep. hard primary endpoints, first study ever to con be concluded Absolutely. as such, uh, of all-cause mortality and worsening heart failure admissions in comparison to existing conventional standard treatment. Yeah. So that was the uh, objective of the study. Uh, we looked at the uh, primary endpoint yep. of a composite of all-cause mortality and worsening heart failure admissions. Um, and obviously, uh, we have a list of secondary endpoints we looked at because these patients' inclusion criteria mandated having an ICD, yes. by the ICD already implanted, not part of the study, already implanted. Sure. So you have to have that device implanted with the home monitoring capability from Biotronic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They had to be uh, in, uh, have an LV dysfunction, EF less than 34, 35 or equal to 35%. Yeah persistent paroxysmal long-standing persistent AFib we took all of those people and neocar class 2 or higher and uh, you know we randomized them yeah uh, one arm get the ablation treatment and the other arm get the uh, conventional uh, mm -hmm. guidelines based uh, treatment sure with medication and uh, how many patients did you recruit in the end we screened more than 3,000 patients we ended up uh, randomizing and enrolling 396 patients yeah um, and then uh, over we followed them over a period of 37 months yeah uh, up to five years yeah uh, follow-ups up to five years yeah in patient the study took us eight and a half years to finish almost yeah, nine sure. years to yeah, finish yeah, yeah. absolutely uh, it's a long-term study which is we excited about by the way too because that's very powerful in terms of long-term follow-up and it's certainly what happened later. You, you rarely find AF studies which follow out for, for, for that long, do you? That's exactly, that's the first of its ablation study. Exactly, that's the ablation exactly, study. yeah, they normally that's get the stuff first, much earlier yeah, than that. And the first of its kind, and, 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 and that's what's unique about Castle is uh, we didn't look for AFib recurrence, we didn't look for EF changes, uh, subsequent the quality of life and so yeah. on, which is important so in the secondary endpoints. Sure. Does people die yeah. or live longer? Yeah. People go to hospital and that's something hard endpoint for the first of its time. That's why we are very excited about that study and its results as well. And, and one of the inclusion criteria was an inability to tolerate antiarrhythmic drugs. That's, uh, that's thanks for reminding me yeah. of that. Yes, failure to one antiarrhythmic, yeah. intolerant to one antiarrhythmic or unwillingness, but that's very important because yeah. a lot of patients come to our practice today yeah, sure. and people underestimate that. Yeah. It's like, I don't want to take amiodarone after the reading, the side effects of amiodarone. We see this every day in our practice. And that was one of the uh, inclusion criteria. If a patient doesn't want to take antiarrhythmic, we took them in a study. Yeah. So what's important for the finding of Castle, because around 48% of patients, if not mistaken, I'll tell you anything wrong here, uh, did not take any antiarrhythmic, were unwilling to take antiarrhythmic. So that's a, that's a lot. So yeah. we, have a, we have a group which is practically never took an antiarrhythmic in Castle. Yeah. As a first line therapy as well, which is keep that in mind. Uh, that's that's a that's a major issue. It's a major major yeah. major finding too. And then so the results were really quite uh, were you surprised? I mean they were very impressive. Can you tell us a bit about the, the, the major findings? To be honest, uh, the the uh, yes, I put the hypothesis together uh, yeah. with my team and you know uh, uh, with uh, our senior committee and Professor Bachman or my, my co PI. Uh, we put it together a long, a long time ago. We put it together in uh, two thousand five and six. Uh, oh, wow. That's our hypothesis, right? Yeah. Is that back then we believed affibrillation uh, we're gonna save lives. And yeah. uh, when we put a study like this together, you should not be surprised, that's your estimation. Yes. After everything been published and done, and and, and you know, and in terms of mortality, we were we were surprised that supposed across the board everything was positive. So, what, so in terms of endpoints, is the composite uh, endpoint? The composite endpoint was 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 positive for the relative mortality. rate reduction of thirty eight percent. Yeah, mortality was positive with the uh, with the relative rate reduction of forty seven percent. Wow, uh, worsening heart failure admissions positive with a relative risk reduction of forty eight percent. Yeah. Uh, cardiovascular mortality was a driver yes. with uh, a relative risk reduction of 51 percent wow so that's all positive stuff but the thing that surprised me the most honestly in castle 
I was surprised in one finding is yeah. that 63% of patients yeah. were in sinus rhythm after five years in the yeah. arm, which is which is a lot compared to other existing study. Yeah. And and in this case, it's not me or you assessing uh, rhythm. It's the machine. Our nurses, it's the machine. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So uh, that's that's impressive. Although yeah. we left, we didn't mandate the type of ablation. Yeah. We to let the people ablate they want to at, at, at their approach, at their, uh, which is important too. Yeah. And every study we did, we did other studies in the past, a DCAF one, and now we're doing DCAF two. We stayed away, as you know, as an EP specialist. Yeah. It's very hard to tell exercise. And, that, and, that, what and that, to was, do. that was the first question my colleagues asked when I told them about these uh, results. They said, What was the lesion set which was That's done in exactly. the study? So, what, I mean, roughly, what's the proportion of PVI only versus PVI plus? We mandated PVI yeah. on everybody. And then we ended up having 98.7% of patients having PVI done successfully after initial procedure. Yeah. We allowed any kind of lesion sets they want. Yeah. We never told them, you can do whatever you want. And we ended up with 47% of the patients yeah. having extra lesions, cafes and so on. Sure. And this would come out in the paper, hopefully, where we're detailing that there was no difference in terms of primary endpoint. Between the two groups. Between the two groups, yeah, which sure. is interesting. So, which is confirmed what Castle, what Star what F2. Star F2, yeah. So we need to be more specific about how to ablate this patient to improve our outcome. Yeah. But again, 63% in sinus at, at, at five years. Although keep in mind, 30% of the patients were proximal AFib. Yeah, I mean, that, I, I think that in itself is impressive yeah. because two thirds of your patients were, were in persistent or long-standing persistent, persistent AF, which, which, which is pretty impressive. Which is, uh, which is as, as long as you know me, probably you know that I don't, I don't take this this uh, very seriously, the persistence. I'm a fibrosis guy. You know? sure, I, I yeah. think there's myopathy. Yeah. And maybe Castel AF is just confirming that as well in terms of, because if you look at the, at the, at the people who profit from ablation in Castle, if you yeah. compare the AFIBs versus the AFIB occurrence, uh, there's some analysis. If you look at carefully, there was no significant difference. Yeah. So you could be doing well and still have AFIB burden, like yeah. five thirty percent It's not completely cured from AFIB and you're still doing well. But it's something else we're doing with ablation, remodeling the atrium, improving it, that we need to continue looking for. Yeah. Um, now we see the AFib burden was cut by half in AFib, in, in Castle, yeah. which is which is important to mention. It could be a, 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 the cause for success, but still, uh, if you compare within the group of who, in, in the ablation group, who, who patient who did well and not do well, there was no uh, a, a striking difference between people between with sinus and, and AFibs. You know what I'm sure. saying? If, if you have recurrence of AFib, there wasn't, Five seconds, ten seconds, at, uh, ten percent burden. There was no difference, major difference. In okay. Of. And in terms of uh, DCM versus non-ischemic, was there any kind of? Uh, no, there was. It was. Yeah. Same, and same and, and in terms of the group, was it was pretty. Uh, pretty even the only people those. that that uh, there's a tendency, and, and I don't want to make a conclusion of this. So I have to yeah. be careful in conclusion of this. Is is the people? I showed this yesterday in a slide. Uh, the the uh, EFs less than twenty-five to twenty percent. Yeah. Not do as good as 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 good as the as the higher EFs. Yeah. And the same thing if you look at the uh, uh, forest plot. Yeah. Um, the New York class three and four. Four was like only five or six patients, if I recall. Yeah. It wasn't much. Yeah. In class four, but in class three, it wasn't as as impressive as class two. Sure. Okay. Or class one. What well, this tells us that. The early stages of the heart failure. That's when you want to get to it. That's when you get yeah. to them before they get, uh, you know, out of control. Yeah, because I guess these are people who are still in New York NYHA three after having CRT slash ICD and and a, and a long period of time that's, on. That's important. On optimal important. medical therapy. And there as was, well. by the way, mentioning CRT, there was there was no difference. There is a striking difference with CRT and, and dual chamber. Yeah. In terms of outcome as well, it was similar outcome. That's that's very interesting, isn't yeah. it? And I mean, whether there's a change, but nothing significant. Were there many people, did uh, many people require multiple ablations or? Uh 1.6 ablation per patient. Okay. So actually to, to be specific, uh, 38 patients under one second ablation out of, you know, the, the ablation arm. Okay, yeah. And it's quite, no, it, my, it, my, 30, a, 38 patients, yeah, not 38 percent, 38 patients. Wow. And it's a multiple, uh, it's a multi-site study mm -hmm. and international as well, I understand. 31 sites, nine countries, yeah. Australia, Europe, United States was only Utah, University of Utah and States on the one side. Uh, because back then, 2006, we have ch challenges to initiate it and, and complexity. So we, we inside one side, side only. Yeah. And the rest was Europe, usually Germany and, uh, and Europe and, and Holland. Um, and Australia, we have yeah. three sides, Dr. Martin, Dr. Sanders, where the driver is there. Um, so it's international, a lot of sites. And we looked at this, interesting, we're looking at deeper and deeper, the, the, the yeah. data is fresh. 
to understand this influence of sites of country. And we're not finding any signals there, but yeah, but an approach. But it means it's on. quite it's a it's a heterogeneous group. It's so the results are probably applicable everywhere in most health systems everywhere, which is um, which is we're excited about exactly. And I guess um you know people are talking about uh, ESC studies which have twenty thousand plus patients and. <laughs> and seeing small, small benefits. We're seeing a, a, You're seeing pretty, big, a pretty big absolute risk reduc reduction in a, in a, in a relative... You know. number, number needed to treat in CASA was 8.3 patients. Exactly, To yeah. save one life. Yeah. Where do you see that? Yeah, exactly. You're probably seeing that with some of the early CRT studies, but That's since exactly. then, That's exactly. we probably haven't seen anything in Nothing. cardiovascular medicine, let alone... It, 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 let alone catheter ablation. Well, it, well we needed something ever, cardiac ablation yeah. to just not looking at afib recurrence only, but you know, or, 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 or change in EF or, yeah. or, or change in uh, flutters or change cycle lengths as an endpoint. We have a hard point finally as a primary hard point. Did you know, uh, when you mentioned ejection fraction, was there a change? Did yeah. you measure that yeah. as well? Yeah. Yeah. Was I, there an I improvement in ejection yesterday. fraction? I showed that yesterday. 12, 36 and, and five years was significant change improvement. In fact, at five years of 8% mm -hmm. improvement in the ablation arm versus none in the conventional arm. Okay. At slight improvement at like two percent at twelve months in the conventional arm versus seven, and then it's five versus one, and then eight versus nine. So, yeah. significant improvement all over. Excellent. Uh, over over time, yeah, that's, that's important too for for mortality benefit. Yeah, well, it so gives but they have above thirty, above thirty, above thirty five percent. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it maybe gives us an insight into how how it's actually delivering its benefit. This intervention. Yeah, yeah we're yeah. keeping people from the hospital, avoiding the compensation for heart failure early on. If you look at the Kaplan minor curve for admissions, they split early on in the yeah. study. That's important, and it's important to mention more than sixty percent of the patients after ablation, the EF improved. Yeah. To more than thirty five percent. Keep this in mind. That's a yeah. big message. The big message. Ablate them before you put the device. Interesting. I mean, that's the message you have well, to Well, I don't know. I mean, this is a very gray area, isn't it? I mean, I don't know. We have, I, we have to go back. We have to go back. You're right. Very yeah. gray area. Very, very sensitive area. Not yeah. only gray, it's sensitive area. I'm sure there'll be some and strong opinions topic. about that. Yeah, <laughs> very much so. Around. We have to go back and look at uh, more deeper into, you know, the risk of sudden cardiac death in these patients. We have ICD. We have so much well, data exactly. on those. Well, uh, I mean, I guess it may, it may also color the decision to take people back to the lab for a second ablation procedure, I imagine, because you've got much more detailed AF data yeah, and, yeah. And, we'll, we'll, and the people of the... We're going to learn more as we go. I mean, there's tons of data that are going to come out. Yeah, yeah no, ab up, absolutely. Yeah. So what's next for this study? So the paper is coming out soon? Hopefully soon. Yeah. Hopefully soon. We can't talk about it. Um, yes, hopefully soon. Um, obviously, you can understand. We, we, we're trying to hopefully impact guidelines with this paper. Yeah, I'm sure we it will. We have to yeah. uh, in your country and, and everywhere else. Yeah. Uh, I, I we needed something in evaluation because when uh, I hope people start doubting this procedure yeah. as a, as straightforward. And well, it's only for persistence. There was the, outside of the world of EP where everyone's a believer. There's there, there had been growing skepticism, and, and I think now and, and heart, heart failure, failure yeah, patients. Absolutely. People like to consider those no, this is like mm. heart failure management. Now they, I hope my heart failure colleagues will be, we've been more encouraged about partnering in a more I don't want to say aggressive way, but in, in a partnership to improve the patients' lives and quality and and and. Uh, Lower cost. I mean, you take people out of the hospital. It's yeah. a big deal. I mean, it's yeah, a 30, 37, 38 percent. That's 40, it's 47, 48 percent of deduction. That's a lot. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, these are exciting times there. Uh, I was very excited for AP. This year yeah. is AP year, it seems like. Definitely. And thank, thanks for presenting those results. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me.